Hi, I'm Ashton, and a couple of weeks ago I asked you guys for some questions on Instagram, Twitter, and on the community tab here on YouTube. A lot of the times when I do Q&As, they're very like themed, like, oh, ask me questions about top surgery, or ask me questions about gender, or whatever, but right now, um, I did not ask for a theme, which I have not done in like nine months or something, so yes, this is the first unthemed, just ask me anything Q&A in a long time now. Um, I'm gonna start with Twitter. Casey Brown asked, what are some of your favorite things? It can be anything. I feel like you guys know a lot of my favorite things, like I talk about a lot of my favorite things a lot, so I like bats, I like body modifications, I like uh, patches and pins, and I like music, I like art, and I like flowers, and I like nature, and I like I was gonna say art again. Um, yeah, those are the things, uh, just off the top of my head, just things I like. Flynn asked what my favorite kind of bat is, and Oliver responded that they didn't know that they needed the answer until this question so badly until right now. So, I have a few types of bats that are like up there on the list. I don't have one specific favorite, but I really like Honduran white bats. Uh, here's a picture. Just because they're so unique, like within bats, there there's just no other bat that looks like them, specifically coloring wise, obviously. So I like Honduran white bats. I like bumblebee bats just because they're so freaking tiny. And I like any um, type of flying fox bats just because I feel like those are the most aesthetically like, this is a fox with wings, literally, and I love them. There are also a lot of other bats that I just absolutely love, but those are off the top of my head three that are some of my favorites. Purple Boy asks, do you have any advice for when you don't know your own name? I've been going by my chosen name for over a year now, but it doesn't feel great anymore. The thing is, I don't know what does. I do have a whole video on um, choosing your name and like how I chose mine. But it does tend to be like a very personal thing and unfortunately it's not something that is easy to give advice on. One of the things that helped me a lot though was using different names in different like video games and I know it sounds silly, but like if you just want to play Animal Crossing 10 times over and change your name every time and figure out, hey, I like this one for myself, then do that. If that's what helps, then go for it. I think it's also important to keep in mind that your chosen name won't feel great forever. Like, even though it does still feel validating and good for me to be called Ashton, it's not as, like, euphoric as it was when I started going by Ashton, just because that newness has worn off, you know? It's still a name that I enjoy being called, and it's still a name that I identify with. It's just not a name anymore that brings me, like, this vast wave of joy every time someone calls me Ashton. Um, so that might be what you're experiencing. So I would say stick with the name that you've chosen for a little bit and just see if it feels normal for you, if it feels right for you. But if it doesn't and you need to experiment with like 10 more names, ask your friends if they'll help you experiment, um, ask Siri to call you different things. Uh, you know, there are a lot of things you can do to like experiment with different names. And sometimes you just need to try out a few different options before you find one that fits and that's all good. Lucy said, how are you doing mental health wise? Like generally therapy going okay, love you. Thank you, I love you too. I haven't been to therapy in like over six months, which is not great. My mental health is just very, it feels like it's on pause at the moment, like partly because I'm not going to therapy, but partly because like I'm just so busy in so many areas of my life that I feel like my brain is just like, we're just not gonna think. I still, you know, deal with my OCD daily and stuff, but as for stuff like depression, my anxiety has been kind of bad recently, but I've been like forcing myself through that. And even though that might not be the most effective way to deal with anxiety, I've just been forcing myself through some anxiety things and I've survived, which is like the bare minimum I know, but eh. um, I do want to, I really want to go back into therapy because I miss my therapist and I need a letter from her for like college things, but I just haven't had a chance. I, you know, I go to high school full time and she only works mornings at the moment because of maternity leave. So I just haven't been able to see my therapist in forever. <laughs> Chandler asked my favorite and least favorite things about the place that I live because we live in the same state and they wanted to know like my opinions on the state in general. Um, Okay, so I live in North Carolina for the uninitiated. My least favorite thing is the politics. I feel like that may be somewhat uh, given, but um, HB2 was obviously really difficult for me to go through, especially because it happened like maybe only a year or so after I came out and I was just like, well fuck, like now I can't do anything. Um, so that felt really restrictive. But then again, living in the states, politics tend to be a downside for me as a trans person. So I'm not sure if that's like a state specific thing or just a thing that like politics fucking suck. And then my favorite thing is that where I live, I can drive like three hours to get to the beach or three hours to get to the mountains. I think that's rad. I like being close to two like vastly different places that can both 
be like different forms of joy. I vastly prefer the mountains personally. I don't like beaches that much. I don't like sand, it's coarse and it's rough and it's irritating, gets everywhere. But <laughs> yeah, I like the option of like being able to go to either and I grew up in the mountains over the summers and I love the mountains and I like being able to like be smack dab in the middle of them and go whichever way I need to. Okay, we're gonna go on to YouTube now. Um, very gay boy, same, asked, what is your advice on going to the men's bathroom in public when you don't feel like you pass as much as usual? Love you, Ashton. I love you too. For me, the main thing has been confidence, like faking confidence, not gonna lie. Cis men just seem to be so confident in themselves all the time. Like, they don't question themselves when they go to the bathroom, you know? They're not like, oh, is someone gonna think I'm a girl? They're just in there, like, taking a piss with their dick out and they don't care. So I try to exude that same energy of like, I know I'm supposed to be here, and if you're gonna tell me anything otherwise, I will pull out my dick and slap you with it. If you walk in there doubting yourself and looking like you're doubting yourself, then I feel like you're a lot more likely to be called out than if you walk in just being like, I know I'm supposed to be here, like don't even talk to me about it or I'll fight you. Even if you have to put on this fake front of confidence, it's always helped me in the sense that like, if I look like I belong here and if I look like I think I belong here, then no one's gonna question me on it. Of course, there are days that are worse than others and sometimes I just avoid the bathroom altogether, but in general, um, fake it till you make it confidence-wise, and that's been what's helped me. Advice on choosing names and what's your star sign? I feel like I covered the choosing names one. But as for a star sign, I'm an Aquarius Sun, Gemini Moon. Crunchy Jello Comics asked, what is your favorite type of moth? Death's Head Hawk Moth. That's the type of moth that I have tattooed on my thigh. It's my favorite moth. I love them. I'm gonna go into a bit more detail um, in that when I put up my video about my tattoo, which, which should be about a week from when you're watching this, or from when this video goes up. Um, Cal asked, what is the best book you've read lately and why? I'm currently reading Hollow City um, by Ransom Riggs, and I really like it so far. I read the first um, book in that series, which is um, Miss Perjean's Home for Peculiar Children, a while ago, and then I reread it, and I found out that it had two more books in the series, and I was like, so I got them um, with a gift card that I had, and I'm on the second one right now, and I'm almost done, and I love it so much. Thriller stories in general are like a favorite of mine, and then when you add in like supernatural elements like they have in that series, it's just like my favorite. But after I finish that series, I'm gonna read Beyond Magenta and do a trans book review on it. Alexander Levi said, any advice or tips to help a friend struggling with self-image disorder eating. I'm really scared that someone really close to me is going to get hurt because he won't eat enough. I've done videos before on how to help friends with mental illnesses, but when it gets to a point when you are genuinely worried for their safety, it's really time to talk to an adult or talk to an adult or a teacher or somebody that you trust that can get that person help. Even though as a friend, you do have a lot of power in helping people with their mental health, it comes to a point sometimes where they need something more than what you can give. And it's not bad to tell someone that they need help. And even though you might feel shitty about it at first and they might not trust you because it was something that they trusted you with, with sharing that, when it comes to a point where it is harming their health, you are completely right to tell someone, even if it means breaking their trust, because you might be saving their life. They might hate you for a while, but eventually once they heal and once they recover and once they get the help that they need, they'll realize that what you did was good for them. And if you have a friend that you are genuinely worried about, please get them professional help because I know that you can feel a lot of the times that you as a friend can help them all they need, but you really, really can't. If you have a friend that you believe is a danger to themselves, then that is something that you need to tell somebody that can take care of them and that can get them the help that they need. All right, we're going to finally move on to Instagram now. Green Eggs with Spam said, opinions on trans trenders and on Stimming in the Void replied, he did a fascism parley on that. So thanks Stimming in the Void for I don't know, promoting me on my own Instagram, but yeah, I do have a whole patches and partly discussing my thoughts on transgenders, but if you don't want to go watch that, which is completely understandable, my patches and parlays tend to be very long, um, my thoughts are leave people the fuck alone and let people identify however the fuck they want to. Policing other people's genders is only hurting literally everybody, and they're not hurting anyone by identifying the way that they do, so just let people exist. That's my take on it. Triggering Fuck asked, how is the long distance relationship with Jack and how are you guys doing? Um, we're doing all right. We're doing pretty good. So I got into the college that he goes to, and I'm probably, I don't know, I'll have to decide whether or not I'm actually going to say where that is, but it's a university that I, I really, really like, and I'm really excited to go to. I'm 99% sure that I'll be going to the same school as Jack next year, which means that we won't have to be in a long distance relationship anymore, but we made it through like a long time, and we're doing pretty well. And I'm really proud of us, honestly. We at least text every day, and we probably FaceTime at least every other week. 
um, we're good at keeping in communication with each other because I feel like we both consider each other like our closest friends, you know, in a way. Being long distance is hard, but it does make whenever I am able to see him even like more incredible and even more like a happy moment because it's like I haven't seen you in months. I did see him on March 1st because I went for a scholarship interview that day and he was there. Um, not interviewing or anything, just like outside of that. Long distance is hard, but we do manage to see each other more than a lot of long distance couples do. And we are just really good at communicating with each other and I love him and I'm glad that we've managed to make it work so far. Stimming the Void asked a good question. They said, any tips on introducing yourself in a trans-friendly space while you're questioning your gender? I don't know what name and pronouns to give people when they ask and it feels super awkward. I totally understand where you're coming from, but I think that the way that you phrased it in this question is actually a really good way to introduce yourself. If you know that you're in a trans-friendly space in a place where people would accept you regardless of your gender identity or your lack thereof, then I think it's completely acceptable to just say, hi, I'm questioning my gender at the moment and I don't know what name or pronouns that I want to use. Again, if you know that it's a trans-friendly space, then you might be able to say, could you try like mixing up the pronouns that you use for me? Or could you try using they, them today? And then maybe next week, could you try using she, her? It's okay to feel awkward I feel like a lot of people feel awkward even in explicitly trans spaces saying that they're trans and introducing themselves that way, but making it clear that you're not sure who you are yet and you're not sure how you want to be referred to yet, I feel like people would be generally pretty accepting of that, um, assuming that they are accepting of trans people. I think you'd be just fine introducing yourself with, hi, I'm still questioning, and that's completely all right. Elian Process said, which felt more liberating, first tattoo or shaving your head, or was it about equal? Um, mm, this is difficult, but they were equal in very different ways, because shaving my head is a very, like, non-permanent thing, you know, hair grows back, but it was something that I got to do myself, like, it was something that I physically took control of and did, and then getting a tattoo is something that's permanent, and I love my tattoo, and I can't wait to get more, and I'm thrilled with how it turned out, but um, it isn't something that I physically did, like, personally, where I was shaving my head, like, I personally shaved my head. Getting my tattoo was like, I sat there and read while I was being poked with some ink needles, you know? Getting my first tattoo was more liberating artistically, um, but physically shaving my head was more liberating, if that makes any sense. Joe Burns 908 asked, how is the hunt for colleges going and have you settled on one? As I kind of mentioned earlier, I think I have. I'm not sure yet if I want to say where that is. Um, but I got into the Honors College and I got into a research program as well and then I'm also a finalist for a scholarship, which is really exciting. Um, it is here in the States, but I'm not sure if I want to specify any more than that just yet. I might in the future, I don't know, but yes, I think I have decided. So that's really nice to be done with, you know, it's nice to not have to worry about that um, as much as I have in the past few months. That horse guy asked, do you feel any pressure that because you're trans FTM that you need to look really masculine instead of how you want to look? Um, I'm not sure how well this person knows me, but I want to note first that I'm not trans FTM. I don't consider myself FTM because I don't consider myself ever having identified as female. It's just not something that I label myself with, so no, I'm not trans FTM. That said, I did used to feel the pressure to be more masculine than I am, but the longer that I've transitioned, especially socially, the less I've felt forced to be masculine just because the more comfortable that I've become with myself, the more I genuinely don't care what other people think. As long as I pass often enough for my social dysphoria to not get terribly bad, then I'm happy with the way that I present and I like looking the way that I do and I wouldn't change that just in favor of looking more masculine. I'm a playground kid asked, what is your opinion about Buck Angel? Oh boy. So for anyone that doesn't know, Buck Angel is a older trans man that's been the face of like trans men in general forever. He calls himself transsexual, which is completely fine if you want to identify as like transsexual as opposed to transgender. I think that's rad. You do you. But his pin tweet is just, oh, it gives me real bad vibes, man. His pin tweet on Twitter is a hashtag transsexual is different than a hashtag transgender person. I am transsexual. I had a hashtag sex change. I live in the binary and use testosterone and surgery to masculinize my body. I am male, not hashtag trans. That's the difference, smiley face, heart emoji. And it's also noted that this man, like the first thing in his header on Twitter is human rights activist. But that tweet alone gives off such a toxic masculinity vibe to me. And the whole like, I live in the binary kind of belittles those that don't, including myself. I also think it's really ignorant to claim that transsexual and transgender are two different things because it's policing other people's identities. And even though I, like Buck Angel, have had top surgery, have been on testosterone, 
I don't consider myself transsexual because I see it as an outdated term and being trans doesn't have to do with my sexuality, it has to do with my gender. He also says that he's male, not trans, which kind of implies that you can't be both simultaneously, which feels shitty to me. I think Buck has been through a lot and he's done a lot, but I do think that a lot of what he says is outdated and that he should maybe listen to younger trans people as well, because just because younger people have less experience, that doesn't mean that their opinions and their views and their experiences are any less valid than his. He seems to be somewhat elitist in that, like, he's, he seems to think that he's, like, the trans person that sets the rules for other trans people, and he, he's just not my favorite person, but, like, I don't have anything against him. I think he's free to identify as transsexual if he wants to, but I don't think that he should take the label transgender away from other people just because it doesn't suit him. Sarah Ree said, Hey Ashton, I love you so much. You're an amazing YouTuber. Thank you. I love you. You're very sweet. Um, just wondering, will you be designing any more patches? The bat one is so cool. Thank you. Um, I hope so. I'm getting, like, some black fabric eventually to paint my back patch on, and I do really want to produce some other patches, like, maybe to sell, because I feel like some of you might be interested in that, and it would definitely be something that would interest me. I think it would be cool to have my back patch and then make, like, some smaller, like, condensed versions of my back patch so that you guys could have, like, a very similar patch to me. I think that would be really cute. Like, I know that I'm gonna end up with a lot more fabric than I need for my back patch, so yeah, maybe I will, like, make a few smaller patches. If you're not sure what this person is referencing, um, I did a Patches and Parley a while ago where I was designing my back patch and I'm still working on it, but this is, like, where I am right now, kind of. It's not gonna reflect the best, but this is the back patch that I'm designing that this person is referencing. So, yeah. So yes, hopefully I will be designing more patches in the future, and I'm glad you enjoyed the bat one. Maddie the Geek said, what would be a good color to dye your hair for somebody who just wants to give it a try, aka me? Um, I think red and purple are both very good starts. I started with blue, but really it's whatever you want to do. Like, I can't tell you what to dye your hair the first time you do it, or at all, ever. I would say the first time you might want to get it done professionally, just so that you can know what that process is like. But if you do just want to dye your own hair, fucking do it. I'm not going to stop you. I love that DIY culture shit. It's great. I don't think there's any wrong color to start with dyeing your hair. Um, Pick your favorite color, pick a color that you think suits you or goes with a lot of your outfits. Do whatever the hell you want. A former Clarity, aka Liz, said, Did you listen to Control Top yet? Hell yeah, I did. Um, so Control Top is a smaller punk rock band, and I won't be able to see them because the day that they're in my state, they're like two hours away on a school night. Listen to Control Top. They're really good. And thank you, Liz, for recommending them to me. Um, they're great. Um, former Clarity also asked, what is your favorite and least favorite cliche vegan foods? I do like salads, but I'm, I'm like, I'm very specific with my salads because a lot of salad dressings actually have anchovy in them, which is not vegan, um, or vegetarian by that matter. But I do like a good salad. I also really like um good tofu tofu i'm picky about because the texture is kind of weird sometimes but if it's good tofu then mm, yes there are a couple places around me that just make incredible tofu they're both asian places um and then my dad also makes some pretty cool tofu there's a place in canada that i love and i haven't been to in forever but they make a really good salt and pepper tofu i love a good tofu um i like cauliflower as a replacement for chicken wings that might be a little bit cliche but i think that's really good i like black bean burgers a lot but veggie burgers i don't like like okay Here's the difference for the uninitiated. As a vegetarian, I don't eat hamburgers, so instead I eat veggie burgers. I found that there are like two types of veggie burgers. One, veggie conglomerate, which just tastes like a salad put in a blender and stuffed into a patty. It's not good. And then there's black bean burgers, which are very good. Um, if you do a black bean burger right, it will be 10 times better than an actual burger. I guess almond milk is probably also kind of like a vegan cliche, and I'm more of a soy milk person than an almond milk person. I'm also more of an almond coconut milk person, like the mix of the two, than a almond milk person. And I feel like almond milk is probably the most commonly cited like vegan milk alternative. So yeah, those are, I guess, some favorites and some least favorites. Delusion and Prophecy asked an interesting question. Um, can you personally be friends with people with political differences from you? I feel like there's a lot more nuance than I could put into a Q&A, um, but generally, it depends on the political difference. I'm just gonna give you like a kind of overview of my view on this as an answer 
Um, and we can discuss nuances like in the comments or whatever if you'd like, but essentially, if you have a political difference than me, I'm like, the rich should be taxed at a 95% rate, and you're like, the rich should be taxed at a 90% rate, then okay, we can be friends. But if I'm sitting here like, the rich should be taxed, and you're sitting there like, billionaires deserve all the money that they've made, then I have a problem. There are definitely political boundaries that I'm fine with being friends with somebody that's on the other side of it, but when it comes to more moral issues, then I have a problem being friends with somebody that is just of a completely different moral school of thought than I am. I have trouble making friends with people that are like staunch capitalists. I have trouble making friends with people that don't think healthcare is a human right. You know, there are some things that I won't budge on, but when it comes to stuff like, I think the tax on uh, beans should be 10% and I think it should be 7%. Like, I don't care about that, you know? It's just like these specific moral boundaries. Eline Process said, do you have a favorite genre of YouTube videos outside of LGBT stuff that you routinely like to watch? Um, outside of LGBT stuff is a good specifier there because I definitely would have just lifted, listed off a bunch of LGBT stuff. Um, but I watch a lot of body modification related content. I watch, I watch a lot of Quickened. I watch a lot of Treacle Tats. Ooh, I watch a lot of Drawfee, which is like a channel um, that's an offshoot of college humor, kind of, where a bunch of artists are just, like, given these ridiculous prompts and they're like, sure, I'll draw a future Spider-Man or, like, the most horrible creature from Lovecraftian horror possible. Have you ever been to Carowinds? If so, what's your favorite coaster? Sorry, I can't think about anything but my special interest today. Are roller coasters your special interest? Because I also very much love roller coasters. Yes, I've been to Carowinds maybe four or five times, and my favorite roller coaster there is the Nighthawk. For those of you that don't know what Carowinds is, it's a amusement park, like kind of on the border. Well, not kind of, it is on the border between North and South Carolina. They have a roller coaster that's my favorite called the Nighthawk, where you are, you know, you sit in a seat thing, but your legs are like in front of you and then they lean you back and you have this harness on and you are literally like, it feels like you're flying. It's incredible because the harness is in a way where like you're being supported, but all of your weight is on the harness and you like swoop over water and do loops and like you're laying on your back the whole time and it's, Mwah, it's so good. I love it so much. Frankie Hume said, have you considered going stealth when you start going to college? They know it's not something that everyone wants, but it's something that they might want to do someday. I've considered it. I don't think I will, just because I don't pass very well all the time, um, and also because it's not something that I desire in life. Like, I do want to be read as a male, but I feel like being trans is a part of my history as a person, and like, a lot of where my experiences come from that make me who I am. So it's not something that I'd want to hide. I feel like it'd be difficult for me to be friends with someone if they didn't know that I was trans, just because I draw upon it so much, like, as my experiences and stuff. So yes, I've considered it, but I don't think I'll be doing it. That said, I have tried to be stealth a couple times in a couple different like isolated situations, and it's always been very awkward and it hasn't entirely worked, which which I will probably talk about in a later video. Argenti Nonsense asked, do you have a big extended family and do you hang out? Um, I do have a big extended family, but we don't hang out because they all live in Canada and I'm stuck here in the States. I have a couple cousins that live closer to me, um, but other than them, everyone lives pretty far away, so I don't think I've been with more than, like, a few members of my family other than situations like weddings. Science Sorcery asked, have you added anything new to the wall above your desk recently? I have, and I don't even know what was even there the last time I showed you the wall behind my desk. I also just think it's really sweet that Celeste remembered, like, about the desk wall thingy, so I'm just gonna give you a tour of what's on the wall behind my desk. Let's do that real quick and then we'll cut back to this. Okay, this is the whole wall behind my desk and we're gonna start left going to right. So that is a pin that I got from Disney because I did the, like round up and donate this much thing. That right there is a little magnet that I got um, of a Monet painting from a museum that I went to. And next to it is a drawing of a fern that my friend did for me. And there's a little po postage stamp of a fern that, that was also with, um, from an envelope I got sent. That's a little strip of film negatives from an old, uh, camera. That's just a photo I took, also with an old camera. That's a dried rose from Prom with Jack. Um, that is a postcard from the island of Shinkatig. That is my dead-ass air plant. Um, that's another postage stamp, another dried flower, another dried flower. That is Ollie's pin that I have because they left it at my house months ago, so at Ollie, please come to my house and pick up your pin. Um, that's a little spirograph thing that my um, brother made for me, and those are some cutout hearts that my cousin Ollie sent me. 
Um, that's a postcard of a piece of art that my mom's had since she was like 20. <laughs> and she was gonna throw it out and I was like, oh, I like that one. I'll take that one. So I did. Um, Love Knows No Gender sticker from Bianca's Designs. A little fungus toadstool boy that I've had literally since second grade. I don't know how I'm keeping track of that. Um, a little tattoo aftercare sheet. Feather that I found. A uh, note that my boyfriend gave me for Valentine's Day a couple years ago. Um, a vial of testosterone. A wind-up butterfly toy. Rapidash Pokemon card because that's my favorite Pokemon. Um, another dried flower, dried fern, another posted stamp, um, two dead butterflies that I found dead, I didn't kill any butterflies, um, another dried flower, a little charm with pencils on it, another photo I took in the mountains, a yay vegetarians magnet, alright we're almost done, a dead dragonfly that I found, also like the butterflies, found it dead, didn't kill it, another sticker from Bianca's Designs, um, a dried red carnation that my boyfriend got me, a Polaroid of me on New Year's, a little card from a shop that I got a choker from, um, seashell that my friend gave me in elementary school, butterfly wings, art by Adam, um, I have talked about his art before on my channel, I love it. That is the piece of art that came with, uh, the fern stamp and the little flowers on the envelope, so I kept those two. Um, a wire flower that I made years ago, my boyfriend's nameplate thing from graduation, uh, a little strip of stickers from a Currituck Beach Lighthouse, clearly. A bookmark that one of my mom's artist friends made. Another photo I took at the top of one of my very favorite hikes, um, which is John Rock. And a uh, business card from a tattoo artist I'm going to next month. And that is my whole wall. Goodness, that is a lot of stuff. Green Eggs with Spam asked, Do you have a funny story that has to do with you being queer? Oh yeah, don't we all? I actually have a list of them, I have a running list. Um, and I think I'll have enough soon to do a video of, like, a couple of awkward queer story times. So, watch out for that at some point. I will definitely do that. Um, the couple situations I mentioned with being stealth a few minutes ago, those will also be in there. So, yes, I do, but I'm not gonna tell them right now because they're just so good that I gotta save them. Okay, my voice is getting very tired, so I'm gonna go have some water and edit this video and go to bed because... It's time for me to go to bed. I'm sorry if this video was a little bit rambly, but I hope you got the answers that you desperately needed. Watch out for the tattoo video coming soon. I'm excited about that. Um, yeah, goodbye. Thank you for, I don't know, taking some interest in my life, and I hope that you learned something about me today, and I will talk to you later, maybe.